in the last class we have seen that we had discussed the mechanism by which a period 1 fixed point in a map gives rise to a period 2 fixed point and the mechanism was that uh, we had talked about the intersection of the 45 degree line with the graph of the map and at some point this slope becomes less than minus 1 and at that point it happened. The result was what was the result? The result was that this fellow was became unstable still it existed, but it became unstable and at the same time a orbit something like this became stable. Do you understand what I am doing? I am saying that this point will map to this point and then for the next iterate I have to come down to the 45 degree line and come down to the graph of the map and again. So, it forms a rectangle meaning that this point will map to this point this one and what actually is happening is that this is the 0 to 1 real line and this point is mapping to this point and this point is mapping to this point that is what is happening on this real line. Well, after all what is it? This is something that is obtained by discretizing a continuous time dynamical system. That means, we have placed a Poincare section and then we have seen the, the return maps and then we did all that and then we concluded that this is resulting in the destabilization such a mechanism is, is resulting in the destabilization of a periodic orbit resulting in a period 2 orbit. What is happening in the continuous time domain? Continuous time domain earlier it was an orbit something like this which is now turning into an orbit something like this. right? Because in this one if you place a Poincare section you would see a point and in this one if you place a Poincare section you will see a couple of points fine. So, this one is changing to this one. Now, there is a concept in in uh, mathematics called topological equivalence meaning that if you imagine this as a sort of a rubber band and in how many ways can you sort of distort it without making any fundamental change in it. For example, if you want to distort it you can push it here so that this orbit becomes something like this is possible all right. But in order for this to be turned into this one it is not just pushing or pulling something additional had to be done meaning you have to take it uh, you have to take it and you have to twist it and then only you get something like this which means that it is it cannot be transformed into this one without by just pulling some part and pushing some part of this uh, orbit. So, these two are topologically equivalent, but these two are not there has been a break of the topological equivalence as it came from this one to this one. Hmm. Uh, there are most mathematically rigorous definitions of that, but I am not going into that. It is for our purpose sufficient to understand that we are talking in terms of rubber sheet geometry and uh, the way rubber bands can be turned and twisted <coughs> that suffices for our purpose in, in convincing ourselves that here we are talking about the breakdown of a topological equivalence. So, the change over from a period 1 to period 2 orbit in involves a breakdown of a topological equivalence. Now, whenever now I come to a definition whenever as you change a parameter there is a breakdown of the topological equivalence of the asymptotically stable orbit. Then the behavior is called a bifurcation. So, what did I say? 
as the definition of bifurcation in bifurcation we are not talking about the transient behavior we are talking about the steady state behavior only this is a steady state behavior so is this so when the steady state behavior changes from one type to another type type means there is a qualitative change in the behavior when it changes to from here to here as you change a parameter that can always happen or you may you may say that there was an orbit something like this which was the result of an outgoing spiral inside and an incoming spiral outside nice and it changes to say a very longer stuff but the behavior is more or less the same this is topological equivalent to that one so when that kind of a change happens we will call it a quantitative change small change preserving topological equivalence but while uh, a change like this happens where the topological equivalence is broken we will say it is a qualitative transformation qualitative change and when that happens we have a bifurcation so in essence the last step when we were talking about the period doubling mechanism we are talking about a specific type of bifurcation and that bifurcation where period 1 orbit was giving rise to a period 2 orbit period 2 orbit was giving rise to a period 4 orbit and so on and so forth that is called a period doubling bifurcation there is another name that goes with it uh, the name is okay in order to understand the name we will have to take a, a re look at this behavior see here is the here was the fixed point and as the slope became larger than or smaller than minus 1 because it is a negative slope then what happened here the orbit changed to a behavior something like this with the pre existing fixed point somewhere here right which means that the orbit actually flips between the two sides of the fixed point ok it flips once it is here and it is here uh, once it is here another time it is here so on and so forth and that is why there is another name for the same one this is e same as flip bifurcation if you see in books or other literature this uh, names just understand that they are talking about the same period doubling bifurcation so let us revisit the the period doubling bifurcation fast because we had spent enough time on that the last day uh, what happened was what was the parameter value at which it happened so we have we will have to come to a place that is very close to say 3 something like here right so we see if it is say 3.2 uh, so if you start from a point somewhere here this is which point can you see that this point is the actual pre existing fixed point period 1 fixed point which has now become unstable and so orbit spiral outwards and what kind of di diagram is it this, this kind of a diagram what is it what is its name cobweb diagram because it looks like a cobweb right so this kind of diagram where we go from a particular value of the the initial condition to the graph of the map to the 45 degree line to the graph of the map to the 45 degree line and so on and so forth it takes the shape of a cobweb and that is why such a diagram is also called cobweb diagrams and you should really cultivate the practice of drawing these cobweb diagrams because that allows you to understand the behavior of orbits hmm, qualitatively without really doing the algebra just imagine the algebra of doing this would be rather tedious and time consuming 
if you simply do this graphically you can understand the behavior notice one thing as if this fellow became unstable something here and there that became stable huh? if you change the parameter to a smaller value you can see that so it is here so this becomes stable now if i ask you what would be the stability status of the period 2 orbit what would you do you will plot x n plus 2 versus x n, find out its fixed points, drop the ones that are also the fixed points of the period 1 orbit, find out the ones that have newly appeared and talk about their stability in terms of the slope. And these are these two fixed points. What is the slope? The slope is nothing but the slope here and the slope here multiplied that would be the slope of the period 2 orbit that that is what we have already shown the last class so here the slope is negative there the slope is negative and therefore the slope of the period 2 orbit would be positive so as this fellow becomes unstable a period 2 orbit occurs period 2 orbit is stable because at this point this the slope and at this point the slope is much smaller if you multiply them you get a number that is smaller than 1 so it is stable fixed point but the the slope is positive notice that as i change the parameter oh it has already crossed it is period 2 orbit still but nevertheless it has come to the other side therefore what does it mean here the slope has become negative a negative slope here and no here this is positive so product would be a negative slope so can you visualize that the if you, if you if you plot the slope then when the period 2 orbit fellow started its slope was 1 as you keep kept changing the parameter it was reducing and inevitably at some point of time it has become negative and as it goes on inevitably at some point of time it will again become minus 1. So, the period 2 orbit will also lose stability through the same bifurcation, the same flip bifurcation. Okay. Continue this, this argument you will find that the period 4 orbit will also lose stability by the same mechanism, period 8 orbit will also lose stability by the same mechanism. So, when each orbit comes into existence its slope is positive and plus 1 as you change the parameter further then it goes from the plus 1 towards the minus 1 thing and then it goes out thereby that particular orbit becomes unstable. When it becomes unstable do the orbits lose the existence no they are still existing meaning that when you look at the bifurcation diagram like this of the same system over the range 2.8 to 4.0 then here in your mind in your mind something that you cannot plot directly here but in your mind you should look at it something like this that at a point in this case 3.0 this fellow become unstable and two period two orbits emerged nice good but the old one you can see uh, can can you show the yes uh, so a, as this one this one becomes unstable this fellow continues really and after some time this fellows also become unstable and you have the emergence of period 4 orbit and still these fellows continue right and then these fellows also become unstable and again these fellows continue and as you proceed you can easily see that the lengths 
for which each of the periodic orbits are existing are slowly going down <coughs> right and that would ultimately accumulate if you if you think that as this by this again this by this all these are ratios less than 1 and that would accumulate to that would be there will be there will be accumulation point that means if you go on on to this 1 to 2 2 to 4 4 to 8 8 to 16 16 to 32 and so on and so forth it will accumulate to infinity but within a finite parameter range right that will happen within a finite parameter range that's exactly what you see here it has accumulated more or less here right it has accumulated more or less here now there is a nice rule to it the rule is that if you if you consider the range of parameter values for which the period 1 orbit existed and the range of the parameter value for which the period 2 orbit existed and if you take the ratio then you get a number period 1 to period 2 if you do that you will get a number greater than 1 right again if you take the ratio of period 2 and period 3 you also get a number hmm. and as you progress you always will get keep on getting the number and it so happens that number that number that ratio always converges to a single number always converges to a single number and that number is you can you can imagine it like this limit n tending to infinity the range mu n minus 1 minus mu n minus 2 that means uh, if n is say 3 then I am talking about the range of parameter values the, the parameter value at which the uh, 3 that means mu 2 minus mu 1 and here it is mu n minus mu n minus 1 which means this is the range in which say period um, okay this range in the numerator huh? uh, this range or if say mu is 3 then you have mu 2 minus mu 1 here it is mu 3 minus which means the previous one is here and the later one is there okay in the denominator so this number as mu tends to infinity uh, as as n tends to infinity should always converge to the number 4.6 six nine two zero one six zero nine and so on and so forth you might wonder why hmm? this is a very interesting and famous result by Michel Feigenbaum uh, I will not exactly rigorously prove it here, but I can sketch the proof. How does it come about? You notice that uh, here I am talking about this this range of the parameter divided by this range of the parameter, <coughs> then this range of the parameter divided by the next range of the parameter. Hmm. So what are you doing? You are going ahead. Now if you are going ahead then let us just blow up this part and see what is there looks identical right let's just let us block this part identical let's just blow up this part identical let's just blow up this part okay uh, now, now you have understood more or less what is happening. So, 
So, in the bifurcation diagram, you see what is known as self similarity. If you take a part and zoom it, it more or less looks like the whole. And that is why, as you go closer and closer, you find the same phenomenon happening at smaller and finer and finer scales. Now, why does it happen? When we started looking at the first one, what did we do? We plotted the the second iterate of the map, right? That is what we did. So, you see this one was the fixed point of the original one huh? and these two are the fixed points that ap had appeared. Now, you see here there is a hump and here there is a fixed point that has now become unstable like there was a fixed point here that became unstable and now here this is the point that is now stable good. Now, as you change the parameter further say the period 2 orbit also becomes unstable let us start from a initial condition somewhere like uh, 0 0.7. I want to show it here. So, it starts from here and it, it goes like this. Now, you can see that it, this fellow has also become unstable. In order to study it, what will you do? You will plot the period fourth iterate of the map. So, fourth composition x n plus 4 as a function of x. Notice here, here it is now having the same kind of behavior that you saw earlier, right same kind of behavior that you saw earlier and now this fellow is now stable. So, if you increase the parameter further, you see here uh, it has become a bit cluttered. So, let me reduce it. See here, can you notice, can you see that here there is again the same phenomenon happening and at some point this point, this parameter will also this particular point will also become unstable and then you will need to look at a blow up of only this part say only this part right and then you will start from a parameter value say 0 0.9 okay so at this this point will become unstable and then in order to study its behavior what will you do you will again draw the eighth fellow here and this fellow has also become unstable and so on and so forth. Now, notice one thing, I will I'll, I'll reduce the iteration number so that you can see clean. This part does not it look like the same as the initial logistic mass graph, it is basically the same. So, what is happening is that as you go into higher and higher iterates, you are looking at the same kind of graph, only the individual differences between the graphs are now being sort of ironed out. So, you might say that this kind of graph would result from an equation like this, that is also a one humped map. It might also result from the equation of a parabola, it might also result from the equation truncated equation of a hyperbola and so on and so forth. Individual graphs are all different, but the more you are what is happening, you are zooming on to the top part of it. The more you do so, the more you zoom on to a particular part of it, the more the individual differences of different maps are being wiped off. You are essentially looking at closer and closer zooms of only a part, right. That is exactly why, that was Feigen Mohr's argument, that is exactly why this number must be universal. That is why this number you do not get if you take this, these values low, n values low, because if you take 3 and 2, then essentially you are 
you, you are still seeing the differences between different types of graphs of the map. But the more you zoom closer, you, you eliminate the differences, you essentially come to some kind of a universal phenomenon. And so, this number is true for a wide variety of systems. Notice the only logical necessity in my course of development was that it must be a one humped map. It must have just one hump, huh? so just one maximum, so that a, a graph like this will not work. But any system that ultimately maps into a one humped map should give rise to the same kind of behavior. That was the concept of universality. In fact, widely different systems, the systems that have no uh, uh, connection with each other, each other, they have all found to exhibit period doubling cascade and in the period doubling cascade this number appears, this number to this extent of accuracy appears. The mathematical logic is that the more you are going into the cascade, the more you are eliminating the difference between the individual functional forms. You are essentially looking at this particular part which take a hyperbola, take a parabola, take any type of graph, it will remain the become the same and that is why ultimately you will land up in the same number. This number is called the Feigenbaum number or Feigenbaum ratio. Hmm? The way to prove is, the way to prove it that this number you get uh, involves renormalization, uh, renormalization group ma method that are now very common in mathematics and some disciplines in physics that has been used here, but for our purpose since most of you come from engineering disciplines, it is not all that necessary to go into the detailed proof. Just get a idea of why it is true. Now, how different are the systems in which it has been found to be true? I probably talked about the, the experiment by Doyen Farmer, did I not? The faucet experiment? Oh, I did not talk about it. Oh, uh, Doyen Farmer was a a student, uh, his name is and he was staying in a hostel which had a attached bath with it. So, they have mostly hostels with attached baths which you are not blessed with, but they have. And it was not to his liking, why? Because at night he found the faucet, there it was a leaky faucet and drops of water would fall with a irritating sign tip, 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 tip and all that. So, he could not sleep and if creative guys cannot sleep, they do something creative and, and that is why what he did. What he did was, he tried to study this, this tip, 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 tip and he found that the, the depending on the amount of opening of the faucet. Uh, you can have a completely periodic dips, tip, 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 change it a bit, it becomes tip, 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 tip. And then uh, he wanted to find out if there is any rule behind all that. Uh, so, he set up a very elaborate experiment because there was a tip, you could put up a microphone, uh, collect the information, and then on the graph it will show like a you know regular peaks. So, uh, you can find out the time difference between the peaks, estimate the time differences, use it at x n and then that maps to x n plus 1 and so on and so forth, which means that means that you can draw a graph and he found that for small values of the parameter that means the opening of the faucet, it was a period 1 orbit. Hmm. Uh, I probably have the, the graphs, wait a minute. I can show you if it is here. Yeah, you are lucky. Can you just? Is it visible? Barely, right? Nevertheless, uh, for a small opening, all the points collected at one one place. Huh? This is time n t n t n plus one. Collected at one place, which means that it is a periodic orbit, period one orbit. Increase the parameter, 
they collect it in two places. Increase the orbit further, increase the, the parameter further, four places, not three. Four places. And if you change it further, it was a perfectly chaotic orbit. So, it went into same period doubling cascade. Hmm? And if you if you notice when it is chaotic, points fall on every part of this graph of the map. So, this can be taken as the graph of the map and it is a one humped graph, right? Inverted nevertheless, but one humped graph. So, this completely you know uh, unmodelable system, you cannot really do a model modeling of it. Such completely unmodelable system also had a one humped map and the moment you know that there is a smooth one humped map, you know that the phi of numbers will also be valid here and it was. So, you see you can do the, the mathematics on the simple system like logistic map, derive conclusions that would be applicable to completely unconnected system like this. Hmm. There have been experiments on uh, the phi number, number experiment has been also confirmed in uh, very peculiar systems. For example, there was a leaf cover experiment uh, where he he took a very small uh, uh, cylinder in which there was a bit of uh, liquid helium. Why liquid helium? Because it, he could do the experiment with any kind of substance, but liquid helium is liquid at a very low temperature and thereby the environmental uh, noise would be minimum at that temperature. And there was a heating from the below and cooling at the top and that would give rise to a setup of, of convective current and he was looking at the, the behavior of the convective current and there was measuring instruments and the when the report came, it showed a clear period doubling cascade. And here also, lo and behold, there was a one humped, nice one humped map. In electrical engineering and mechanical engineering and in all sorts of places, you find this kind of one humped maps appearing and in all there would be a period doubling cascade with this particular number as the, the uh, organizing the whole period doubling cascade. Clear? So, what we are talking about are not special to this particular map that we have taken. It is general. It is universal. That is why it is said to be a universal mechanism of period doubling cascade. Now, let us come to something more. Imagine a, a map given by, I am using this because here A is the parameter, because this is simple. It is even simpler than the logistic map, that is why I, I took this. Can you find out the fixed point of this one? Very simple because in order to find out the fixed point, you would say that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side <coughs> huh? and then you would say x right. So, you say the fixed points are located at Now, you notice that for A, for A, uh, the, this particular fixed point begins to exist at a specific value of A. Where is it? Minus? Minus 1 fourth. So, A is equal to minus 1 fourth is a sort of a critical thing, hmm? below which there is no fixed point, above which there is a fixed point. Now, what has happened here is that okay, in, in order to find out what is the behavior here, what will you do? You will take a derivative of it and try to understand how it is behaving. So, if you take the derivative, you will find 
What is the derivative? Is equal to hmm. now if you put if you if you substitute this minus one fourth if you substitute minus one fourth here what do you have here zero and therefore you have minus one by two so that is your uh, so minus half substituted here what do you have one plus one okay so if you put a is equal to minus one fourth so that x n star is equal to minus half substituted here you have d x n plus one d x n is equal to plus 1. I will write plus 1 with the reason. I will come to that. So, from this, can you infer the, the, the shape of the graph? These were on the computer. So, without really thinking, you could see what is happening here. But now, I am deliberately choosing a different map, so that you are forced to think. What will be the shape of the map? What is happening here? What is happening here is that below a certain value of A, there is no intersection with the 45 degree line. That is the meaning of the non existence of a fixed point. There is no intersection with the 45 degree line. At that particular value, there is an intersection, and when there is an intersection, the point of intersection has slope of 1. From this, can we not infer the behavior would be something like this? that initially it was something like this and then as you change the parameter it will be like this and then it would be like this right that is the only way it can happen following this what do you expect the behavior to be following this there would be two fixed points right if, if you change the parameter even further there will be two fixed points one with the plus plus one and uh, this plus component and the minus component and these two fixed points will be here and here right the two fixed points will be notice that always one of them will be unstable and the other one stable there cannot be any other way always one of them will be unstable and the other one will be stable and in the, in the in the actual system what do we observe there was no stable behavior earlier there was no stable behavior if there is no intersection with the 45 degree line there is no stable behavior suddenly a stable behavior is appearing that's also a bifurcation that is also a qualitative change in this asymptotically stable behavior of the system right now, this bifurcation is happening with the graph of the map becoming tangent to the 45 degree line. That is why this is also called a tangent bifurcation. Hmm. This is also called a tangent bifurcation. In books, however, you will find another name for it more common. See the tangent and being able to see the 45 degree line applies only to one dimensional map. If it is 2D, then you cannot really draw a graph like this and therefore, you cannot really see a tangent or something. So, the general nomenclature of it is saddle node bifurcation. they are the same things only in 1d systems 
one dimensional map here I can plot where I can plot x n versus x n plus 1 only such systems the word tangent bifurcations are valid in higher dimensional systems there is no concept of tangent and therefore you cannot really call it a tangent bifurcation their more general term is certain bound but also in 1d this term is also valid though you cannot really saddle see a saddle or something like that i'll come to why this name came when i treat higher dimensional systems but presently just just remember the name i may be interchangeably using the word saddle node bifurcation in place of tangent bifurcation so you should not be confused because i am also more used to using this term because that's used more in literature so what has happened was in the system there was no fixed point no stable periodic behavior and suddenly this fellow is stable right that fellow is unstable this fellow is stable that has appeared so a tangent bifurcation or a saddle node bifurcation results in the birth of a stable periodic orbit remember that that results in <coughs> the birth of a stable periodic orbit that was not there earlier but whenever there is a birth of a stable periodic orbit you should know that even if, if only this one is visible why because start from any initial condition it will go there not here only this one will be, will be visible but even if it is there from theory you should know that there is also an, an unstable fixed point existing that is important very important why i'll come to that later but you should remember that the one that you can see is not the whole of the story whenever there is a saddle node bifurcation in fact this fellow is called a node and this fellow is called a saddle in more general context so a node has appeared an attracting fixed point has appeared but also an a repelling fixed point has also appeared hmm? you cannot have anything otherwise so a tangent bifurcation is associated with the birth of fixed point just contrasted with the period doubling case where there was no birth of a fixed point it was something becoming unstable at a period doubling bifurcation the period one orbit became unstable but it still existed at a tangent bifurcation it ceases to exist imagine that there was a graph of the map like this and as you change the parameters approaching this way what will happen these two points will come close to each other collide with each other and then it will annihilate it no longer exist right so it sort of makes a pair of fixed points vanish imagine in a practical system such a thing is happening means that you have a stable periodic orbit you are happy my engineering system is working fine but as you change the parameter such a thing is happening what will happen then it's a catastrophe because at this point suddenly you will find that it is no longer existing something that was there is not only losing stability it's just ceasing to exist it's a catastrophic situation so a saddle node bifurcation seen in the opposite direction seen in one direction it is the birth of a fixed point seen in the opposite direction it is the death of a fixed point now this also allows us to explain some of the things that we have seen in this bifurcation diagram i have talked about the bifurcation diagram earlier right so you have this period doubling cascade and all that all that fine they are going on but do you see that here there is a opening there is a something known as a periodic window it's not continuously chaotic in between it is the chaos is broken 
by some range of the parameter when the behavior is periodic. Hmm. And for example, here I can see that there is a one, one, one uh, iterate here, another iterate here, and the third iterate here. So it is a period three window. Okay. How this come about? How could this come about? I can see that the, the, the value of the parameter is slightly greater than 3.8, right? So let us look at the graphical analysis as a at a parameter value, say 3.8. But now I want the first composition to start with. Oops. Oh, I'll, I'll start it all over again. Fine. Okay. So here is the. Ultimately, when it has come to period three orbit, you can see this period three orbit. Can you see that? So start from here, it goes to the graph, comes here, goes to the graph, comes here, comes to the graph of the map, and it loops, which means that it is a stable period three orbit. Hmm? I will uh, note down the parameter value for which it happened: three point eight two. 83 but i'll start from slightly less value it's still chaotic fine now let me in order to understand it let me plot the period 3 behavior the third iterate of the map xn plus 3 plotted as a function of xn notice this is the this is the graph have you seen that? Fine. Now keep noticing as I increase the parameter slightly. Okay. Again, slightly more. Do you, do you see what is happening? These points are coming closer and closer to the 45 degree line. Can you see that? These points? Even closer. To the 45 degree line, huh? 3, 2, 8. Now become tangent, right? So, when we what we are talking about here in this direction, do you notice that the same thing is happening here? It is becoming tangent. So, what is actually happening here at the birth? of that period tree window is nothing but a saddle node bifurcation. Okay. So, if I ask you what created the, the periodic window, what will be the answer? A tangent bifurcation or a saddle node bifurcation through which a new fixed point was born. But now, this new fixed point, see if, if, if it is, I will increase it slightly further. It has not crossed. I will make it a little more visible. I will <coughs> show only this part. See, it has crossed. So, the, the phenomenon that we are talking about here now has happened here, but obviously, it has resulted in one unstable fixed point here, a new pair of fi fixed points, one unstable, another stable, and this is what we are looking at. And this is a fixed point in in the third iterate of the map. X n plus three is equal to X n, which means it is a stable period three behavior. Clear? That is what we are we are seeing in the bifurcation diagram. It has resulted in the birth, or it has resulted in the chaotic behavior becoming unstable, and the period three be become behavior becoming stable because of this. So, at that point, a new period three window appeared because of this saddle node bifurcation. Now, notice that if I if I expand only this part, it is again a period doubling cascade. 
because what has crossed here is also the same same thing right and as it goes on you can expect the same thing to happen so the period doubling cascade will again appear in this small window right is that clear and again if you keep on enlarging it you find the same thing and all that will again show the same Feigen bubble number. Let us kill it and let us start it all over again. Uh, now, not only the period 3, this was the large window, large periodic window of period 3, period 6, period 12, period 24, and all that. Right, it was also a period doubling cascade. But here you can also see a gap. Here you can also see a gap. Let us expand and, and check out what this this fellow is. Ha! Huh, it's period six. Right. And that is also going through a same period. If you if you look carefully, then you see other periodic windows here and here. Huh? So that as you zoom into the bifurcation diagram, you keep seeing small periodic windows, each one created by the same mechanism of saddle node bifurcation. Okay. Each one ultimately undergoing a period doubling cascade, finally merging into the chaotic behavior. So, in the whole bifurcation diagram therefore, you can see not only a period doubling cascade once, but an infinite number of period doubling cascades. right? And another important point is that while you see something as chaotic, there are in fact, there is a theorem to prove it that there are periodic windows at every range. Hmm. For example, suppose here, here you, you, you might think that this range is very mm, very chaotic, right? Let us expand it. Ha. Huh. There is something. You might think that this range is very chaotic. So, let us expand it. Let us further expand it. Let us further expand it. Oh, it does not allow any further expansion, but there is a theorem that 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 tells that at every range there should be some periodic window. So, chaos in this case is there, but at every range in the parameter space you can expect a periodic window nearby. Hmm. All that created by the saddle node bifurcation. So, in the bifurcation uh, uh, sequences as you change the parameter you see a a interplay of these two kind of kinds of phenomena, the period doubling bifurcations or flip bifurcations and the tangent bifurcations or the saddle node bifurcations. Hmm. And in the, the one dimensional maps, you only see these two types. The reason being, try to understand the reason. A bifurcation cannot happen unless it, there is instability, right? So all bifurcations are related to instability. <coughs> Most of you are from engineering backgrounds, so it will be easy to understand from that point point of view. See a linear system with which you are so very accustomed. If that becomes unstable, what happens? System collapses. State runs to infinity, right? But in a nonlinear system, there is no reason for that to happen. It might go to another stable behavior. right? So, in a nonlinear system, an instability results in a bifurcation. And instability happens when the graph of the map becomes either minus 1 or plus 1. When it becomes minus 1, we have period doubling bifurcation. When it becomes plus 1, we have saddle node bifurcation. These are the only two things that can happen. So, 
there are essentially two different mechanisms of the loss of stability. Hmm. Though there are more names, in books you will find more names of bifurcation. I will come to what those names imply, but in essence you can easily understand that there are essential two types, the tangent bifurcation or saddle node bifurcation and the period doubling bifurcation. Through these a specific period or orbit can become unstable. Okay. That is all for today, tomorrow we will continue with this.